your parachutes then is ready to deploy. Uh, but before you deployed it, what was the wind and, and wave height at that point when you decided? Uh, probably, probably 20 to 23, 25 feet at times was the wave height and the wind was in the 40s to up to 50. Hi, Zach Smith here with Fiorentino Power Anchor. I've been reviewing footage from Fiorentino's video library and rediscovered an old interview I did with Jim Meliski and his wife. They had actually deployed an 18-foot power anchor from their 49-foot catamaran. And Jim just does an amazing job of explaining the sail balance, uh, why they deployed the equipment, the bridal setup, etc. Just, just really good information we can all learn from. And in the end, I'm going to add a few details about bridal setups to consider for your particular multi-hull. And in some instances, the bridles really cross over to monohull sailboats as well. We got caught with another storm cell coming across. So uh, we, saw, we saw a fairly large storm cell coming, so we decided that the the uh, anchorage we were in was not uh, was not a safe safe anchorage. That uh, was too shallow, and and uh, the, I, I was sure that if a big storm came in, we'd be in breaking waves. So we decided to go to sea, and uh, headed for South Africa. And uh, as we progressed along, I thought we'd get off the shelf, but the shelf runs about a hundred and well, 75 to 100 miles, I think, off the southern coast of Madagascar. We got caught there on the shelf, kind of, and and uh, we almost made it past the, before the heavy weather hit into a little deeper water and a little safer water, but didn't quite. So uh, we were sailing, and um, and we probably, in, in hindsight now, after sailing in some other heavier weather, we probably could have sailed out of problem or, or out of out of the problem area uh, by using a tiny a tiny um, uh, jib and uh, and dropping the main totally that's what I'd recommend uh, uh, on on heavy weather and when you can't do that anymore then I'd go to the para anchor for sure but anyhow we were both tired uh, kind of wore out we had heavy weather for for a couple days and and uh, a couple so, days before you decided to yeah, deploy. Yeah, decided to deploy the para anchor. So, uh, so we we made the decision to deploy the para anchor because I, I figured once I, I had read and read enough that I figured once it was deployed, we'd we'd be pretty stable and be able to get some good good sleep and and I think the boat would be safe. So, that's the reason we bought it in the first place. And the reason a couple things happened to make our decision a little easier. We were we were we were getting up to 18 knots going down the waves, surfing the waves uh, with, a, I had a double reef main up, and um, and that's when I probably should have uh, headed into the wind and dropped the main altogether and put a, a little jib and see if the, what was happening is we were losing our autopilot. So I was having to steer all the time and and uh, we were concerned, the waves were big enough, we were concerned about broaching, so, uh, so we decided to deploy the para anchor. You know, we talked about it. We watched the video a couple times, and we watched the the part that we really wanted probably three or four times, uh, which was the deployment and the retrieval. Because I, once I got it out there, I wanted to make sure we could get it back. So uh, so I went ahead and rigged it all up, and uh, we were hoping to that our our boat our boat heaves to very well with a double reef main, no jib. Uh, we can point it into the wind, and it'll sit there pretty good. And we were doing that, but the winds were getting up into the 40s, the high 40s, and I don't know how how long the boat will stay hove to uh, with the, with with the system that we have pointed into the wind like that. And I figured if I, if she if we went to sleep and she took off uh, sailing, we'd be going pretty fast, pretty quick, and, uh, and that kind of scared me. So. I just, that was another reason we decided to play, deploy the, the para anchor. I, I hope this is not too confusing. But anyhow, once the decision no. was made, we went ahead and we we uh, we got it ready to go. And in our particular instance, what we did is we we rigged the bridle up and then we ran it back along the stanchions. So you did the bridle first. That was the first thing that you you secured. How do you attach it to the front of the boat? Well, I, I've got uh, I've got some great big uh, eyes up there that uh, that screw on, and I went right to the bridle. In fact, the eyes you the eyes I use for for my my anchoring system uh, are the ones that uh, I bought with the para anchor system that I put on because they were so 
good. <laughs> I said, man, I don't have anything this good up there. So I, I used them. I've been using them ever since I bought the whole system. So did you so did you tie it? Did you uh, tie the bitter end of the bridle as a, a tie it up on the cleat, or did you shackle them to the eyes? Shackled them. Okay. Yeah. So you shackled yeah. them, so there'd be well, no I chafing just, or anything like that. No chafing at all. Okay. What I did was I unscrewed the eyes. I leaned over there and unscrewed the eyes that were up there, and then and then put the uh, put the bridle right in there. The bridle that's okay. got the um, uh, the stainless steel uh, thimble, right? Thimble. Yeah. Correct. And you so, have a shackle, yeah. and you have a shackle. Did we make the that? Shackle like, right to the thimble. You guys did. Okay. It, it that, came, then I know what it is. Yeah. When we bought our pair of anchor, it came with the shackle and the thimbles. Right. The bridle. Both. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Everything. Everything. So yeah. And that'd be a fixed bridle. It was a yeah. plug and play. That yeah, was probably, a fixed bridle. Yeah, probably close to 50 feet, if I recall. It's close to the length of the boat. That's right, exactly that's correct. usually how we normally yep. set that up. So, okay, that makes sense. And so you would have shackled that bridle. And this is what I found interesting: is you brought the bridle then back yep. to the I, boat. Yep, I brought the. I led the. In our instance, we were we were taking wind kind of over the port bow, uh, more than the starboard bow. So I led the bridle onto the port side. So the one was shorter than the other one. But uh, but I but I led them both over to the port side and then tied them along the bases to the bases of my stanchions with zip ties, uh, just one zip tie for both lines. Right? Okay, just one. Oh, one. That's clever. That's yeah. better because usually yeah. recommendations are to put a whole bunch of them on. No, so one, one, one is good. Yeah, all I wanted was just to hold it there while I deployed the rest of the chute. I, I certainly didn't want it. Freeze, you know, holding, holding it from going out. So, so I guess my yeah. question would be: Now you've got the bridle attached or, or zip tied. Is that when you went ahead and then grabbed the anchor rope to attach to that? Sure. To the bridle. Okay. Sure. Then I then I took the whole pair of anchor system. Uh, we use a we use a, a bin um, like a like a storage bin from Walmart to flake our line into. Uh, it, it deploys from those very nicely. I imagine you can deploy it from a drum or whatever. But anyhow, our system is is uh, just a cheap cheap um, uh, drum that you, you're a I don't know storage locker. Yeah. It looks like yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. We, we, yeah, with a lid on it. That we, so it keeps, we've all it keeps seen those big drum. plastic square bins. Yeah. Yeah, and we keep it. We keep the whole pair anchor and the line inside of it. It's one of so the did you ones. bring that up on deck from the cockpit area? And then you right, slid I, it up there. Or yeah, whatever? I keep it. I keep okay. it. I keep it in. The, I keep it in one of the uh, one of our aft staterooms. Okay. Uh, so then I I brought it all up on deck, and then I took it up to the trampolines. It was still all enclosed in that, so it was easy. To, it's easy to move around like that. Okay, right? that makes and, sense. And safe. And then uh, the way when I flake the line in, of course, I have, uh, I have the, uh, the part that attaches to the vessel comes out of the, comes out of the tub. Right. And it's marked, you know, vessel. Okay, right? that makes right? sense. That's smart. So, or bridle, the end of the bridle. I can't remember what I have. We can go down and look. But uh, so you, that's what you attach. So that's the end of the line, actually, right? So that's what you attach to your bridle. That's the last piece to go out before the bridle goes out. Right, and you got the opposite end that you attach to the parachute. Exactly. So you you attach that to the parachute. Uh, so then your your parachute then is ready to deploy. Uh, but before you deployed it, what was the wind and, and wave height at that point when you decided? Uh, probably probably twenty to twenty three twenty five feet at times. Was the wave height and the wind was in the 40s to up to 50, so it wasn't terrible. Uh, we certainly, could probably, you know, probably could have sailed, and especially if we would have had more crew on board, knowledgeable crew. It's a little difficult to steer the multi-hull when it gets uh, speeds uh, up into the 18s like that. That's a fast speed. Yeah, you got to be a little careful, and uh, and it's easy to make a mistake. So you have to have talented people, and it was just my wife and I, and so uh, we just we felt. That was much safer to take this course of action, whether we had to or not. That's uh, real questionable. Well, we, we were never in any were danger. Tired. Yeah, we were never in any danger. But yeah, that's when you start making mistakes. Is when you're tired, and uh, and uh, and we felt, you know, why why do that? Because I, I we I I particularly felt that this is why we bought the para anchor. These were the conditions we bought it for. Right. And why not deploy it? Uh, it's a tool. And we have the tool on board, so. Well, here's a question for you, which I was—I'm actually curious because we talked a little bit before uh, doing the video. When you had the bin, when you put brought that on onto the deck, w did you have the bin on the windward side or uh, completely on the trampoline itself? 
Yeah, the bin was right on the trampoline. So closer to midship, maybe? Uh, well, probably, yeah, right in the middle somewhere. I mean, Pretty as long close. as the line's clear. Okay. You know, you, you, as long as you make sure all your lines are clear, it really doesn't matter a whole lot where the thing is, as long as the lines can't get hung up. Right, I know you have the bridle the fastened with the plastic tie, single plastic tie. Right. So now that you got the, everything connected, what was your next step after that? Like, where did you actually deploy it from? I'd be across the crossbar or on the windward yeah. side. Yeah. No, we. I deployed it over the the, in this case, over the port bow. Okay. Not not in front of the boat vessel, but off to the windward side. Right. I just threw it out there, and and um, and my concern was is is that I was worried that the vessel was not going backwards fast enough for the chute to deploy and that it would, you know, just keep taking line out and just kind of be right there. But there was not a concern to be, uh, I wasted my time <laughs> worrying about that But one. you thought about it and those are all things to yeah. consider because if the boat's stalling and sitting in the trough, you're sitting yeah. still. So you want, yeah. you're right, you need that leeward drift. Yeah. Yeah, well you're thinking, you know, well, here I am going to throw this thing off to windward and then expect it to go ahead and, and just feather out there away from the vessel, you know, which which actually it does very well. <laughs> yeah, and I, so, I think from what you were saying that the parachute sank really quickly and then inflated, and this is the part that I was interested in was the, uh, the plastic tie breaking. Yeah. And actually doing its job. Yeah. So, so from your perspective. No, and then I was concerned, you know, that it'd go out too fast and, and maybe get knotted up or something, but if you do a good job of flaking your line in, that's really not, that shouldn't happen. So. Um, you, especially, you know, when you, when, I would say, you know, when you do pack these things, that it's like packing a parachute, you know, you want to make sure that it's, that everything's laid in there right, so it just, when it I liked how you flake the on. roads in that plastic pin, uh, bin, that was a really nice, that, that's a smart thing, having your ropes and stuff like that ready to go, I know that's a real big part of it, so I think that's probably, partly why it, it was effective for you. And the amount of, what was the length of your roads and bridles and so forth, just to give everybody an idea how much rope yeah, that was used. Yeah, the, the size of 5 8 inch nylon, and uh, bridles 50, 50 feet each with uh, thimbles woven in uh, at each end. And the main road is uh, 400 feet of 5 8 inch nylon with thimbles on each end. Right, connected no to, that, yep. to that parachute. I know when I talked to you, my big concern was, was there going to be long periods of slack rope because there was no chain right. attached to the end of that. So we were relying right. on the wind from, from what we were talking about. I, I know that we're, we're relying on the wind of the boat to make your boat drift back really quickly. Right. And uh, from your perspective, it sounded like you were staying head to wind uh, pretty nicely. Right. Because right. I know yeah. we talked about cocking, you know, the multi-hole over, and, and and you did get some wave slapping, so that might be something worthy of. We got some wave everybody. slapping. Yeah, we had we had my wife was saying, yeah, we did get some wave slapping. Yes. Um, w yeah, we had waves. Uh, it was it was a uh, it was a disturbed sea. You know, it was a it was a right. washboard out there. Right. So. Um, yeah, I think I think the wind waves were coming straight at us, and the, actually the 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 swell. Was coming a little bit, of, maybe probably thirty or forty degrees, a little different. Right, too, like like your yeah. wife described, waves yeah. coming from two directions, which is probably yeah. a pre pretty accurate Washington statement. I've seen that yeah. set up before. But the multi hulls, you know, they have a lot more windage, so uh, I think they're they they operate they really operate with the pair anchor very well. Um, you know, there's the, we never had uh, we never had to slack. Uh, we, we, I felt that there was tension on the vessel at all times. So oh, you, I think you would have noticed if it wasn't, and you'd be telling a different story right oh, now. Oh, we didn't bounce <laughs> around. The, the only, the only thing that kind of scared us was how hard the waves slapped the sides of the hulls. It was amazing. I thought they'd cave in the sides. But oh, so the, so the noise was really loud. Yeah, is what the noise you're saying. was loud. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like a, it was like somebody taking a big flat hand and just some giant and yeah. slapping the side of the boat. It was incredible. I've never heard anything like it. Oh, retrieval. We yeah, should talk okay, about so, that. so anyhow, uh, well, we'll talk about one thing here first. So once we deployed the sea anchor, we immediately started, uh, we took a rest, uh, we went to sleep, we played cards. Uh, this part of the, the ocean actually, we, we always have somebody on watch. In this part of the ocean there's just, there's very, very few vessels and the, and the conditions were such that we weren't really concerned about other vessels. 
uh, in this area of the world. Um, could have happened, but chances are pretty slim. So uh, we were tired. We, we rested for two days. Sat out behind that sanger for two days, very comfortably. Yeah, read books, uh, watched movies, played cards. Uh, yeah, it was great. Got plenty of rest and waited for the winds to subside a little. So the winds went down to about 25 knots and the seas dropped about half. Uh, still 10 to 12 foot seas and 25 knots of wind. And uh, But another system was peeling off the bottom of South Africa, coming the same way, same intensive strength. Um, and in fact, that next one that came across, uh, they actually closed uh, the entrance to Richards Bay, South Africa, which is, which is a fairly large commercial port, uh, and it's about a half mile across the entry, uh, not that quarter mile maybe. So uh, we were surprised to hear that, but but that's how intense the storms were at that time. So. Uh, so we decided to retrieve it because we had another storm cell coming and we figured, well, how long can we sit out on this thing, you know? <clears throat> and, uh, and we figured, well, we could stay longer, but, but we, we decided also it was time to go. So 25 knots, 10 to 12 foot seas, and uh, first I had my wife take the helm and, um, and I, retrieved, uh, I retrieved about three quarters of the road. I pulled the bridle in and, and retrieved about three quarters of the road that went to the para anchor. Uh, we we used a uh, we used a, a retrieval ball with uh, I think we had about 75 foot of line on that 50 foot of line on that retrieval ball, and what we used was a was a big round uh, fender. Yeah. And uh, and amazingly, a lot of the times that thing was submerged. Yeah. We had 50 foot of line, so that's how deep the para anchor was going. Wow. Yeah, that surprised me. But I'd look for the ball and I'd say, hmm, where's that the para anchor? That is surprising. Wow. Where's the para anchor? And, I'd rather and I, have it sunk deep. That's, yeah, yeah, that's as long as it sunk, no, I was <laughs> fine with it. But I, I'd look and, and I couldn't find the ball, and then um, and then finally it'd pop up. You know, five minutes later I'd go out, oh, there it is. And, uh, and so it, it, it worked very, very well. My favorite and, part that I found very interesting when I was talking to you and, and Kent earlier was when you were talking about the retrieval, how you're changing positions. I think that's kind of an interesting thing that people can learn from. Yeah, so uh, I was, uh, yeah, so I, re, I, re, I hauled in about 75% of the road as my wife drove the boat forward. Uh, she, did a, she did a great job. And, um, but once we got to that point, I said, okay, now I've got about 75% of it in. Take me to the retrieval ball so I can hook it. She had a hard time uh, operating the vessel in those in those in those conditions, uh, putting me right on the ball. It, first of all, it's, when you're trying to pull up on anything, it's hard to see on any of these uh, multi hulls because it's right below the bows and you can't see over the cabin tops where your steering stations are. So it's a little little difficult, and. Um, and you, you're operating you know, like a tractor. You're not trying to steer. You're just using it because we have engines that are 25 feet apart or propellers that are 25 feet apart. So, so we have great maneuverability. But, but she was having a hard time putting me on the ball. So we switched positions, and she took the boat hook up there, and uh, and I was able to get her close enough to the ball. So she hooked it and then got the ball up on deck, and then we switched positions again. And then I went up and grabbed the ball and was able to then pull on the the back part of the para anchor and deflate it. And uh, uh, and then once 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 the water water's out of it, it's it's it was actually pretty easy to pull in. Uh, there was a major concern when we were sitting there for two days. I was wondering how, if it was gonna if it was gonna be easy enough for us to do it as a team, as a as a husband and wife team. We hooked our bridle up for the for the para anchor. Uh, this is our, our normal ground tackle and our bridle for our anchor uh, road, which we which we, we use uh, we use a rolling hitch on a line under the chain, and then this this hooks into that, so we have a bridle on the chain. So what I did was I unscrewed this, put the bridle in for the para anchor, and uh, so we have no shape at all, and she just goes straight out from there, and uh, it worked very well. This is a piece of stainless steel tubing inside and glassed in uh, along the 
along our, our uh, cross arm here and uh, it's it's worked very well for us uh, I think this this bar inside here is a piece of 5 8 inch solid stock uh, so it's uh, it's worked very, very, very well over the course of uh, the six years we've had the vessel. I brought my tub up here. Pair anchor was inside the tub. Uh, bridles be below, or the uh, road is below it, uh, all flaked inside the tub. And uh, I think I placed the tub probably about right here somewhere. And then I led my bridle out all the way around to the outside of the port. I had the wind coming over the port quarter right here. Uh, and then I took the bridle. The bridle was long enough here where I took it to these first two or three stanchions. Uh, and I zip tied it in. And the reason I zip tied it in is I wanted to make sure it was clear of this cleat here. So I, I brought it below here, zip tied it up to that, that lower part of that stanchion. Uh, used one zip tie for both lines in both cases and then I had the leads to the bridle come back over right across here so so when it was deployed the bridle of course was the last thing to go out and uh, and so the road was coming off of this side everything was clear of this cleat everything was clear over here so once I threw the chute in off of here uh, the, the line the road just flaked out of the tub and then I got to the end of the bridle and everything's out this way and then it, it just snapped those zip ties and the boat came around right into the weather. A pair anchor or storm drogue bridle is used to spread loads at two points on a boat to help better position the boat's bow or stern into the wind and waves. Proper boat positioning with your drag device can dramatically increase vessel stability during a storm. There are two common bridle types. A fixed bridle, defined as two separate roads connected to the pair anchor road, and a block bridle, defined as a single road with a snatch block at the bitter end, which is capable of locking onto the pair anchor road. Both bridle types can be used interchangeably at the bow or stern of your boat. For pair anchor deployment with a multi-hole, the bridle typically positions the boat into a head-to-wind station. Wind and wave hit the boat's bows at the 12 o'clock position. Most multi-hole sailors prefer the head-to-wind station. In rare circumstances, some sailors will shorten one bridle arm by a few feet in order to heave to at about 10 degrees off the wind. This places your boat's bows in the 1 o'clock close hauled position. Bridle length recommendations by Fiorentino for multi hulls are approximately one foot for every foot of boat, your boat's length. We do exclude bow sprits in this measurement. The length recommendation is the same for both the fixed and block bridle. Other suppliers recommend the following for their multi hull bridle two and a half to three times the boat's beam, 66 feet is listed in one manual with no additional instruction. Other suppliers have no information in manuals or website. You'll have to contact them for clarification. Authors in general tend to repeat manufacturer's instruction with some writers suggesting longer bridles up to 100 feet. The issue with an overly long bridle is one side can remain taut while the other side slackens. Eventually the slack roll becomes taut again causing tremendous shock loading. This type of behavior can also cause a boat to slowly spin sideways on the loaded side of the bridle. As a reminder Shock loading can reduce road strength by as much as 50%. If the road absorbs water, you can add another 40% loss in road strength. This equation might make it easier to break the road. Uh, for this reason, uh, Fiorentino recommends shorter bridles since they tend to slacken less, all in an effort to promote constant loading on the bridle to reduce oscillation, defined as the relaxing of road followed by a sudden surge caused by the reinflation of a drag device canopy. When it comes to securing the bridle to your boat, the most common method is to use the forward docking cleats as an anchoring point for your bridle. We can also shackle the bridle into ice built on the outer holes, like Jim Milski talked about earlier in this video. Some of the older boat designs might add a little challenge when setting up a bridle. 
Uh, during one pair anchor deployment test outside the Golden Gate Bridge near San Francisco, the bridle ended up resting on top of the crossbar cables after we chose to use the forward docking cleats as an attachment point. We later determined it was better to shackle the bridle where the crossbar joined the fiberglass hole since this, was, this area was robust and had a backing plate. This move definitely prevented the bridle from resting on the crossbar cables. In another sea trial, we anchored the bridle at the four docking cleats and had no issue with the bridle resting on top of the crossbar cables. However, the bridle bounced around too much. To solve this problem, we decided to use snatch blocks as a stopper to fix the bridle at one location. Locking the bridle down can help reduce chafe on the road. Many multi-holes already have eyes built either on top of or in front of their holes, which can be used as an option for anchoring your fixed bridle. This requires spliced eye at both ends of the bridle road. One end is shackled at the boat, and the opposite end is shackled onto the pair anchor road. As a friendly reminder, Ferentino recommends pair anchor road length to be approximately 10 times your boat's length. The pair anchor road also has a splice at both ends of the road. One end of the road is connected to the fixed bridle and the opposite end to the pair anchor. Keep in mind that road length recommendations do vary between manufacturers. Some sailors may choose to use a snatch block to form the bridle with their pair anchor. In this scenario, the only difference in setup is the pair anchor road is secured to one outer hole and the block bridle, also known as a pendant line, is secured to the opposite outer hole. The block bridle will always end up shorter than a fixed bridle because you have to haul in the pendant line until the block ends up near midship, which is in the middle of the boat. The bridle never remains taut unless the block is close to the boat. Fiorentino discovered how this rule applies to all boats, including the monohulls. The only difference with the monohulls are the angles used to position the single hull boats to the wind. Most sailboats are positioned approximately 40 degrees off the wind. This places your boat's bow in the 2 o'clock close reach position. Motor sailors or power boats frequently hove to 10 degrees off the wind in the 1 o'clock close haul position. The main advantage of the block bridle is the ability to adjust road lengths, which can help maintain constant loading on the road as the weather changes. Making road adjustments in rough seas can be a challenge unless you practice first. I would like to briefly mention how the pair anchors fixed and block bridles can also be used interchangeably with the storm drogue. Uh, for the multi holes, bridle lengths remain mostly the same. However, I have found both types of bridles tend to perform better if they're really short for the monohulls. While sailing in the Baja Ha Rally, we had a nice blow of following sea, so the crew and I decided to play with the shark drogue. The most effective bridle length for the fin keeled sailboat was between 3 and 5 feet. In storm conditions, I've used as much as 10 feet in the past. Since full keeled sailboats track better than a fin keel, I frequently use lengths up to 20 feet. It's important to mention that most published details regarding bridle lengths for storm drogues vary from 30 to 50 feet. It's a good idea to practice using your equipment and find out what works best for your boat. And always ask questions. For example, where do I anchor the bridle for my storm drogue? The answer, usually at your primary winches. However, there are other options if sheet winches aren't available. To conclude, I would like to list Fiorentino's constant road tension formula as a reminder on how to help reduce shock loading and to maximize the holding power of your, your drag devices. The first solution is road adjustment. So if I have a 40 foot boat and I'm carrying 400 feet of road, during calm weather I'm paying out a boat length or two in gale force conditions anywhere from 150 to 200 feet and in heavy weather conditions can be as much as 400 feet of road. But if I don't want to make any kind of road adjustment, I can add some kind of weight to the system. Usually it's chain. For parachute sea anchors and speed limiting drogues, that would be 10 pounds at the canopy end. That way, when there is slack in the road, the chain sinks, which helps inflate the canopy, reduces your shock loading. For stopping drogues, like the series drogue, you would have to go with what the designer has always recommended, 35 to 50 pounds of weight to help eliminate the shock loading in that particular system. We've talked about shorter bridles. Obviously the shorter they are, they stretch a little bit less. I can add a rope that has less stretch as well into the system. I've done that with the US Navy and, and NASA. When I built 
equipment for them. You can add Dyneema ropes or you can mix a uh, combination of nylon and Dacron. There are a variety of ways you can reduce stretch that way. And if all else fails, I've deployed the equipment exactly per instruction and I'm getting shock loading in the system. You can increase speed of the boat either through engine power or by flying more sail. So I hope all this has been helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching.